Right, welcome back to the channel. What have we got here then? Chips. And I don't mean those ones from the chip shop. I mean the TV show, California Highway Patrol. Very popular show with, uh, well, I don't know what it was like in the States, but it certainly was a popular show here in the UK in the, uh, in the very early 1980s. I'd like to say 70s and 80s, I think. Um, anyway, this is an official product um, that was sent to me by Dom, who sends a lot of, donates a lot of radios to the, to the channel, so I really appreciate him sending these through. And um, these really uh, do look the business, don't they? Um, we've got a couple of uh, faux or fake controls on the top. I'm glad to see that they're still there, but they don't actually do anything. We've got the official chips um, uh, badge there. We've got the, the, I guess it's a period California Highway Patrol uh, emblem but it appears to have the guys on the bikes in there so I think that must be something that a custom made graphic that they had done uh, you can see Metro Goldwyn Mayer who were a big TV uh, production company back in the day there and you'll see also and you'll notice that these aren't American sets uh, even though they link to an American show these are CB2781 radios and these obviously were came out in 1981 uh, when UK FM CB got licensed here and then spinning the radio around on the back we can see that they were made by a company called Playtime Products Incorporated who I can find no information on whatsoever. Uh, we've got a belt clip on the back there and we've got an on off volume control. We do have static on this one. We have a code key which beeps there and presume that beeps on transmit. I don't know what frequency these are on. I've not looked into it yet, but that's kind of the point of this video. One thing you will hear in the background though is the 3D printer is whirring away and that's because I've been designing this. I'm gonna put the graphic on the screen now. Uh, you can see uh, I've had to design uh, a new battery plate because the existing one's uh, missing on this set here. You can see there somebody in the past has put a bit of gaff tape on there to keep that in. So what I've done using the original one is I've used that as a template and I've I've designed a new one fit on the back. Now it's not going to be printed in black as this one because it's the only colour I've got on there is grey at the minute. So I possibly will just give that coat a spray paint and a bit of lacquer and then hopefully once that's on it'll look, well, look, a lot, look a lot better than that anyway. So we'll try and clean all this gunge residue off of there with some WD-40. So I don't know if this one is working or not. Let me just have a little look. So it is working and we got our we got our beep as well. So that one's working. So what we'll do is we'll put um batteries in both in both of them and then we'll see if we got any comms between the two. All right, we've got the tiny SA with the antenna stuck in the side of it. We'll turn the first radio on and we'll key up. And there we can see 276. 01. Uh, this is what it's showing on the SDR on the computer as well. So that's a good strong signal. That's off of the first radio. So that's channel 1 FM. And then if we transmit on the other one, we're getting 27601 again on that one. And again, a good strong signal. Probably a little bit. Let's see the strength between the two. They're both lying next to each other. That's the first one. That's the second one. So there's a bit more poke on the second one. That has got maybe a newer battery in, but there we go. Um, so that, that's what they are. They're both on channel one. And they're both pretty much on spot on the same frequency, so that's good. Um, so we'll see if we can uh, just play around and optimize them a little bit, but they're looking good. I'll just check the modulation on each one of these. Oh, I mean, taking the uh, lid off of these, that's quite a surprise. There's a fair bit going on in there, isn't there? We've got our crystal there, you can see, it's crystal controlled. And uh, we've got, in terms of adjustment, more than you might see in some 4 watt radios here. Um, I would say, I guess, this is all receive here, and the inductors there are on the transmit side. Um, you can see here a proper uh, a spring antenna there, so it might look like a just a, a rubber sort of connected rod but it, you can see there's a helical spring in there you can see the dummy controls at the top here and the PTT and the other crystals so it's crystal transmit and crystal receive so far more than you get in some toy 
walkie talkies so I mean obviously this it's compromised by this antenna uh, but I imagine out in the field these will actually perform fairly reasonably um, all things being considered now we can see there we've got four capacitors on board and that one over there five in total um, I'm, but I wasn't hearing any audio problems on these um, and the volume seemed punchy enough but perhaps it, it might be wise to swap those capacitors out put some new ones in you can see that this one here has receded a little bit see the way that the plastic is towards the top of the can there so perhaps I might do that um, but um, yeah, I mean they, they're working so far, aren't they? So let me just take that one of those capacitors out because it does look a bit troublesome, and we'll get it on the tester. Right, I've changed all those capacitors. The green one was the worst one of those that had gone quite high. Um, so they've all changed. The other thing that's worth doing when you see these type of switches is give these contacts a little clean. I use one of these little fibre pens. Let's get in there and scratch away at it and put a bit of switch cleaner in the actual pot. Check for a few dry joints and then I swapped all those capacitors. I tested all the new capacitors to make sure they were all good before we put them in. Gave the PTT a bit of a clean. Um, the speaker has come loose on this one so I've got to just warm up the glue gun. I'm going to glue that in. Then probably what I'll do with this one Let's disconnect the speaker so we can actually set it up on the Synad meter and do a proper receive alignment on it. Um, with my, my experience on these walkie talkies is the receive is more important than the transmit. Um, getting the receive aligned on these is, is more beneficial because uh, they don't do much power in terms of transmit anyway. But we'll, we'll have a little play around. We can certainly use the Tiny SA to peak the power on this because it's not going to move the needle on the meter and the dummy load that's for sure. And I, the other thing I did do was clean these little contacts here. That's the Morse contacts. I just put a bit of very fine emery paper in there and just clean both sides and a little bit of switch cleaner. And uh, that should be good. So yeah, all in all, um, nicely made board actually for a toy walkie-talkie. Very good indeed. So we're going to do exactly the same to the, to the other one. Exactly the same. And then they're both done. That'll take me another 10 minutes. And by that time, the 3D printer in the background should have finished. Here's our battery lid. Let's see if it's going to be any good. It looks good from here anyway. Super pleased with how that's come out. That's totally flush along the top there. You can see it fits flush along the bottom as well. And we've got we've kept the original grooves and the little arrow. I could have even probably got the Made in Hong Kong sticker on the side, but it would be wrong because it was made in the UK, wasn't it? So uh, either printed in black or spray black, that'll absolutely be perfect. And there's such as the joy of a 3D printer that you can do this type of thing because I'm not sure about you but I'm not sure where I'd get hold of another battery cover for one of these. Right, we've got the other radio open now and one thing I noticed straight away was these capacitors are much more beefier than the ones that I took out. Let me just show you. The, the one that I took out there, I just dropped there, that's the same 100 microfarad one with a size difference there. Between the two sets it was presumably made at the same time so perhaps this uh, you know it came at the time when the uh, you know the technology was improving they had an old batch they put them in this one and I don't know uh, it's got the daubing of R1 on here whatever that means um, but we'll give this a scan over we'll, we'll certainly recap it like we did the other one do all the same service things we did on the other one clean the PDT clean the pot and recap and then We'll look at just aligning these on the uh, equipment just to get them as good as we can get them. And that's the best we can do for these radios. But I must say I'm rather pleased how well the um, the battery cover has come out. Uh, I'm sure you'll agree. And you can see how it's it. I, I've managed to design it exactly so it clips in exactly the same locations on the underside. This is the rough side that's supported by the support material. So it doesn't matter. You don't see that. It's on the inside. And... Uh, yeah, we definitely could have printed some text on there. Never mind. It's fun, isn't it? It just shows you how good these 3D printers can be when you set them up correctly and you kind of know how to use them. And I've had a fair bit of practice at doing that. So let's um, flip this over, get those capacitors changed. Oh, and the camera's just told me I need to change the battery as well. Yes, yeah, so we've got the Tronicon capacitor here. The first one I pulled out, 170. So that's well on its way. 
so definitely worth changing this particular brand. Right, we've got it all up, and um, we've got the Synab meter connected up, and um, we've got a 500 microvolts signal on there at the minute. We'll drop it down to 100 microvolts, and uh, you can see we've got quite a lot of noise coming in. That's considered an S9 signal, uh, but that's our 12 dB. So our 12 dB is 100 microvolts, so you can see how deaf this set is. So we're going to work off of that then as our basis on this one. 12 dB, 100 microvolts. I can tell there's people been in here before because there's evidence of that being melted on there. So <laughs> we've got an S9 signal, we're doing 12 dB and it does sound awful. So I need to work out which one is the, de the detector first, but it's so bad at the minute. I need to actually try and bring it in a bit better and then we'll adjust uh, the detector if there is such a, uh, an adjustment on here. Right, so we're now doing 85 microvolts for 12 decibel cyanide, you can see there. So, but take that with a bit of a pinch of salt because it's off the antenna input uh, and I think in the real world these will work better. But that's, we're going to call this radio A and I'll, I'll write, I'll draw on the board radio A so you can see that. Okay, so that top right left one is frequency adjust as you'd probably imagine by the crystal TX frequency adjust and I imagine that these uh, are going to be the power and what I'm going to do to look at this because it, it's not going to register on the meter I'm going to use the tiny SA and and just look at the uh, DBM reading off that so at the moment as I key up on the tiny SA we're getting 67.9 DBM 68 DBM Okay, so what I'll do on there is I'll peek it on the tiny SA and come back and see if we've improved it. I, I doubt we have, but we'll, we'll try. So yeah, receive all. That's all receive down this end, and we've got um, TX frequency, TX frequency. That's those two, and these three are TX power, and they also do affect the frequency slightly, slightly little bit as well when you adjust them. It's not the ideal setup because we've still got the antenna connected here. We should then, then really we should be connecting the other side of that antenna connection, or maybe that's the loading coil for the antenna. We probably should be off the other side of there, but it's good enough for jazz. Uh, and I'm only just after a quick setup. We're not after breaking any records with these. We just want them to work a little bit better, perhaps, than they do. Um, okay, so this radio A, I think radio B is going to have more problems. I think it transmits, but I don't think it's receiving. Okay, it was just a bad connection there. So right, right off the bat, we're getting um, for 12 dB sign now. To just wind it up a little bit. It's doing 105 microvolts for 12 dB sign now. So it's about as poor as the other one. So we'll just work on this receive side and see if we can bring this up a little bit. I don't think we will, but if we can get it to about the same level as the other one, we'll be doing okay. So same here, we brought it up to 85. Uh, 85. Uh, microvolts to 12 dB so we've improved it a little bit so it's receiving exactly the same as the other radio so both absolutely deaf as a post but I reckon like I can say out in the field these won't be so bad right John and Ponch I think that's about as good as we can do with these old radios of yours um, I'm not sure the police would have got on very well in California eh, if they'd have been using these bad boys on the beat uh, I've seen any hood, you know, in the hood downtown, uh, see anyone up to some um, risky business. I'm not sure uh, radioing in would have got you very far. But there you go. Great fun if you were 12 years old at the time, riding around on your grifter with a playing card in your spokes, pretending to be John or Ponch. I don't know. I don't, who was your favourite, guys? John or Ponch? I'm not sure. I always liked both. I thought they were great. It's a good show. It's a good fun show. And um, it was one of those... Uh, uh, you know, American TV shows that really did work well over here in the UK, along with the Dukes of Hazard as well. Another classic TV show. Right, less rambling, more reassembling. It's not going to take very long, is it? Let's put these two bad boys back together, and uh, before the end of the video, perhaps we'll spray paint this uh, battery cover. We'll get that gunge off the battery cover. Do you know what's good for that? I think you probably know what I'm going to say. We should be able to remove all of that gunge with WD-40. Good scrub with some WD-40 and a rag, and I think that will come off nicely. But if we're going to paint this, we want to keep this away from the WD-40. So we'll take that off, and we'll give it a clean up. All right, these bad boys are done. I've just spray-painted the lid for the back of the other one. If it doesn't look great, I'll 3D print it in black. I'll get some black from somewhere and do that, but it's not a bit a deal-breaker for now. 
So, um, yeah, we'll just uh, hope the next shot you'll see will be me and Tyler over the field doing a little range test with these bad boys tomorrow, as long as it's not snowing. And then, um, because it's such a punchy coat um, tone on this, I want to uh, do that tone test as well, just see how far we can go with just the tone with these uh, um, antennas. It should be quite interesting anyway. So, okay. All right, we're here with Tyler. We've come out to test these new chips. I say new, <laughs> new to me, chips radios. We've got John and we've got Ponch. There we go, name them now. So uh, this is going to be a test based on the standard walkie-talkie test we do. Check on the channel to see the ranges that we use on these tests if you're not sure what sort of distance we're talking about. And uh, yeah, we'll get on and test these. So uh, that's John and that's Ponch. Who do you want to be? I'm TJ Hooker. <laughs> CQ contest, that sounds like. What in the hell is that? Yeah, so obviously some uh, sidebanders illegally using the channel today. CQ contest. Okay, yeah, there's just a bit of noise on here, Tyler. We won't worry about that. Tyler, we won't worry about that. Uh, I would, uh, I mean, it's quite, quite a bit muffled here, but I just want to make out what you say. Uh, how am I sounding and sounding in your head? I can hear you, sort of speak cable, it is a little bit muffled. Yeah, they are a little bit muffled. I'm not quite sure why that is, but um, can you hear me okay? Give us a beat. Give us a beat. Right, I had to swap over to my phone because the batteries run out on my uh, camera. Hi, right, Tyler. I'm going to move to the next location. Do you want to give us a beep again? Give us the beep. Right now, yeah, this is definitely the limit of these radios. Tyler's over there by the trees. Uh, especially with that other guy on the illegal side bander there. Um, do you want to give us a tone, Tyler? Give us the tone. There you go. That's cutting through all right. I'm going to give you the tone back at this end, okay? We're going to do the tone. You heard the tone. Okay, that's great. Okay, we'll leave it there. And... Uh, I'll let, I'll come back to you in a second, okay? Yeah, see that's that's it. There we go, the chips radios. I thought we're gonna I'm gonna turn that annoying sidebander off. I don't know if he is a sidebander or if that's just AM. Obviously he could be legally doing it and these things are quite br what well this actually wasn't, this is actually quite selective on the channel so yeah he's obviously illegally using channel one there. I will check that when I get home on the on the radio. Uh, on the base station and uh, see what's going on there well okay I think you know I think we've proven the fact that these are working they're certainly working nicely now and uh, I would say I've still got I still haven't painted the battery lid yet uh, but I'll at the end of this video I'll just tack on a picture of the battery lid so you can see how nicely that's come out if anyone has got one of these and they have a missing battery lid I'm, I'll happily drop one in the post to you I've, I've, they're easy to print off so if anyone's got one and they need a battery lid just let me know Right, I think with that and that annoying person there interfering with my radio operations, we'll call this one a day. If you have been, thank you ever so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care. He's even better looking than you are. Hey guys, really cops. Thank <laughs> you.